Welcome to the Shedding Your Morning Wake Up Call right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio, but we are streaming live on the internet at KFAR660.com. We also are available on your smartphone. If your phone is smart, you can download the free TuneIn Radio app and listen to us anywhere in the world that you have coverage. Which, which is, in fact, just about any, anywhere these days. Joining us in the studio from Bighorn Enterprises, we have Josh Bennett here. Good morning, Mr. Bennett. Good morning. Oh. Good morning. Yes, <laughs> welcome all to your weekly deprogramming program. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a little more than one episode to get sufficiently deprogrammed. Yes, I'm it takes still, many I'm, a moon. I'm something. still being deprogrammed. How, many, how long have we been doing this? year and a half? Two years? Working on two in May, huh? Wow. 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 All right. So, let us deprogram. One of the things we want to talk about today is nullification. People have been talking about that a lot on local radio and not so much national radio shows at all, but uh, it's kind of a, a national talk among, you know, it's in the news here and there, the nullification. People, uh, I don't think, understand it correctly. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so much uh, angst over it. And part of the problem is that we have today's constitutional scholars who don't understand. I mean, I don't even like the Constitution, and I know it better than almost all these jokers. Just doesn't, I don't understand where they get some of their stuff. And one of their problems with nullification is the supremacy clause. I heard it talked about here this last week on one of the other shows. Uh, well, you know, we're told that, well, if the feds do this or that, you know, in particular a gun ban or Obamacare or whatever, that, well, the supremacy clause says that we have to obey it. It, over, it supersedes and overrides all state local laws, which I'm going to try my bestest, and you're going to have to bear with me to eradicate today. Let us talk about the Supremacy Clause. Let me find it here. Mm -hmm. Well, this is bull crap. I had this all set up. Now I'm um, looking for it. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of a Supremacy Clause. Per se. Where does this come from? Is this a legal term that has been applied? Oh, no, it's in the Constitution of the United States of America. And it states, the Supremacy Clause is what it says, This Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof shall be the supreme law of the land. Now, these days when you hear your local jokers or national jokers talking about the Supremacy Clause, they leave out made in pursuance thereof. They say, the Constitution and the laws of the United States are the supreme law of the land. Well, that's just silliness. Because what they're saying is that the Constitution and the laws of the United States and Congress pass shall be made in per- plus any laws we may choose to pass, whether it's constitutional or not, shall be the supreme law of the land. No. We have to, words mean things. The laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof. So, pursuance of what? The Constitution. So, the laws that are made in pursuing the Constitution are the supreme law of the land. But, that is only when it is in the limits, the limitations that the Constitution prescribes to Congress. It's not any law they make. So, when we think of... Obamacare. Health care is not in the United States Constitution given to Congress as something they can regulate or do anything with. It's not in there. Remember, in the Constitution, only things that are specifically granted to Congress, specifically granted to the President, specifically granted to the courts, that's the only thing they may do. Now, we've obviously seen that be destroyed, which is something we've talked about and we'll get into later when, obviously, (laughs) you can't control a government with a piece of paper. But that's why we have nullification. The Constitution, the laws of the land, 
and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof. So let's talk about who and what is supreme in pursuance thereof. Like I said, I got this up, so I got to... A quick reading of the Constitution illustrates that national health care is not one of the enumerated powers by the federal government, so obviously they're not, that is not a law that's in pursuance of the Constitution. So the state has the right to nullify that, in my opinion, which we'll go along here and see what other people's opinions were. Edmund Randolph's initial proposal called the Virginia Plan the national legislature had the ability to legislate in all cases to which the separate states are incompetent. And they had debates, this is the Con Continental Congress, of, well, how much power should the Congress have over the states? Every time that the uh, Congress, the Continental Congress, in ratifying the Constitution, tried to have a negative towards the states, it was put down. Every Seven states voted against negative powers, three voted for it. Every time they had that, there was three that kind of liked it, but the rest of them didn't. And the reason was, with the Supremacy Clause, that they were afraid. The uh, Congress, or the delegates, when they went back to the states to ratify the Constitution, the state delegates did not like the Supremacy Clause because they felt like it would destroy the state's sovereignty. But you have to remember how sovereignty works. You have the people. They create states. States created the federal government. So the created can't rule the creator. The con this constitution, as to the powers therein granted, is constantly to be the supreme law of the land. Every power ceded by it must be executed without being counteracted by the laws or constitutions of the individual states. Gentlemen should distinguish that it is not the supreme law and the exercise of power not granted. This is William Davey from North Carolina in the Constitutional Convention. Gentlemen should distinguish that it is not supreme law and the exercise of power not granted it. It can be supreme only in cases consistent with the power specifically granted and not its usurp usurpations. And future Supreme Court Justice James Arundel, who is a fantastic man. People should read some of his writings from them. He was from North Carolina, and he argued the same thing. This clause, and he's speaking this is of the supremacy clause again, is supposed to give too much power, when in fact, this is the argument that was going on with the ratification. This is something that the state said, no, what is with the supremacy clause? It's going to shut us down, which we found out later did, but it's because it's been misinterpreted on purpose. In fact, it only provides for the execution of those powers which are already given in the foregoing articles. If Congress, under the pretense of executing one power, should in fact usurp another, they will violate the Constitution, which gives you the right to nullify it. If it's not constitutional, the states don't, are not obligated to follow it. If it's not constitutional, the people are not obligated to follow it. Arundel also said, it, may, it appears to me merely a general clause, the amount of which is that, when they, Congress, pass an act, if it be in the execution of a power given by the Constitution, it shall be binding on the people. Otherwise, it is not. Other ratifying conventions had similar debates, and proponents of the Constitution continually reassured wavering supporters, people that weren't supporting the Constitution, that the Constitution would only be supreme within the limits of the delegated authority. Oh. Boop, boop, okay. Can, I, gonna keep, can oh. I back you yeah. up for just a second here, Josh? I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. I mean, the, the, the whole aspect that was opposed in the first place about the Constitution was that it was going to create this framework by which we could basically just reestablish a kingship over these basically free people. In the, in, in the Americas, uh, to a point that was even worse than what they were experiencing under a king, because you can see that, you know, people who get power have a tendency to do what they can to keep power, to get more power for themselves. And I'm looking at this framework saying, you know what? We've done nothing here to limit the government. This is going to be out of control. That is, let us make sure that we are clear. I mean, that's where the first ten amendments to the Constitution came from. Right. Let's be clear about where the rights of the people are. They come from God. 
They're not granted by any state, any government. So we cannot uh, encroach on these. We just want to make sure that we are clear. You can't make a law restricting people's speech. You can't make a law restricting people's ability to defend themselves. You can't make a law that, that makes it so that you can go and, and seize a person's property or harass them and ask for their papers. And basically, all of these things that are happening now anyway, because the Constitution is meaningless. <laughs> you, you look at all of that, and then you say, well, if they're not given specific powers, it's unconstitutional, and we shouldn't follow, follow it. Oh, for instance, they didn't give you health care, but the Supreme Court ruled that that Obamacare was constitutional, not because of health care, but because it's a tax. Right, but the uh, the point of what I'm reading right here is that it doesn't matter what the Supreme Court says. It's up to the states, and I'm going to get into that here in a minute, which is actually the individuals, to nullify it. It doesn't matter what the Congress says. It doesn't matter what the President says. It doesn't matter what the Supreme Court says. They have the limited power that's in the document. When they go outside of that, it doesn't matter if the Supreme Court says we're the ultimate arbitrator with our own law and we decide that we're correct. It doesn't matter. I mean, it matters to the point where we give them our blessing and follow and give the consent, which we talk about all the time. But the point of this was that they were, the founders were saying, don't give consent. If you don't like it, don't give consent. And it gave... We saw with the Virginia and the Kentucky resolutions were just were just that they're saying we don't consent to these laws, which in, was specifically the Alien Sedition Act that John Adams put into law. So ultimately, the three most powerful states in the union, New York, Massachusetts and Virginia, demanded that a Bill of Rights be immediately added to the Constitution. Near the top of those recommended amendments on every list, because they they had a committee of where people wrote up their uh, amendments and submitted the amendment to the delegation was a state sovereignty resolution, which ultimately became the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution, which reads, the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, specifically delegated. If it's not in that book, it ain't good. Nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. And we're going to talk about who, what the states and people are because actually the people are the states. The people themselves can nullify. I want to go down and read some more of what uh, James Madison, who was the father of the Constitution, wrote following in the 1800 report of the Virginia Resolutions. It is indeed true that the term states is something used in a vague sense sometimes in different senses, according to the subject which is it applied. Thus it sometimes means the separate a sections of territory occupied by the political societies within each, sometimes the particular governments established by those societies, sometimes those societies are organized into those particular governments, and lastly it means the people composing those political societies in their highest sovereign capacity. Although it might be wished that the perfection of language admitted less diversity in the significance of the same words. These guys were, like, out there. Yet little inconvenience is produced by it, where the true sense can be collected with certainty from the different applications. In the present in instance, whatever different construction of the term states in the resolution, this is the Virginia resolutions, may have been entertained, all will at least concur the last mentioned, because of the sense of the Constitution was submitted to the states, in the sense that the states ratified it, and in that sense the term states, they are consequently parties to the compact form which the powers of the federal government result in. However true, therefore, it may be that the judicial department is, in all questions, submitted to it by the forms of the Constitution. To decide in the last resort, this resort must necessarily be deemed the last in relation to the authorities of the other departments of government, not in relation to the rights of parties to the constitutional compact, from which the judicial as well as the other departments hold their delegated trust. On any other hypotheses, the delegation of judicial power would annul the authority delegated it. The concurrence of this department with the others in usurped powers might subvert forever and beyond the possible reach of any rightful remedy the very constitution which all were instituted to preserve. Madison, basically, was saying that the sovereignty lied in the people of the state. And to get that a little bit more to the ARG, talk about sovereignty. 
sovereignty is a chief ruler. Sovereign is a chief ruler with supreme power, one who possesses sovereignty. It's also applied to a king or other magistrates with limited powers. In the United States, the sovereignty resides in the body of the people. The Tenth Amendment says power is not delegated <clears throat> to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, or reserved to the states respectively, <clears throat> or to the people. James Wilson, who is a Supreme Court Justice and signer of both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, said the Constitution in the United States, the term sovereign, which is totally unknown, right? That word isn't in the Constitution. There is but one place where it could have been used with propriety, but even in that place it would not perhaps have comported with the delicacy of those who ordained and established the Constitution. They might have announced themselves sovereign people of the United States, but serenely conscious of the fact they avoided the obstetriciousness declaration. Obstetious declaration. In other words, they didn't put that in the Constitution that the people were supreme sovereigns because they were aware of that fact. It would have been like... Uh, Sure. James Wilson also said, as a judge of the court, he, I know and can decide upon the knowledge that the citizens of Georgia, this was a case with Georgia versus, uh, dang it, the citizens of Georgia, when they acted upon the large scale of the Union as a part of the people of the United States, did not surrender, did not surrender the supreme or sovereign power to the state, but as to the purpose of the Union, retained it to themselves. So even when we had the national government from the state governments, the people of the United States, and the United States, we're not talking about the United States government, we're talking little you, united as in a body of states, did not surrender the supreme or sovereign power to that state. <laughs> James Wilson, concerning the prerogative of kings, concerning the sovereignty of states, much has been said much has been written. But little has been said and written concerning a much more dignified and important matter, the majesty of the people. The mode of expression which I would substitute in the place of that generally used is not only politically, but also for between true liberty and taste, there is a close alliance, classically more per correct. Hey, Josh? Yeah. I've been taking notes and trying to follow all, all of this Am stuff I today. No, you know, I'm 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 having a hard time uh, keeping up with this because you know, when you start talking about the issue, for instance, nullification, uh, that's not a word that you use an awful lot in everyday life. True. Sovereignty is not a word that people use in everyday life. Uh, you, you know, when you start talking about how the the rights of the people, I understand rights. At least I think I do. To a certain degree, I, I think I have the right to do what I want to do without somebody telling me that I can't do it or telling me that I have to do it in a certain way if I want to continue to have the right to do it. Uh, when can, can we break it into modern parlance? When you're a sovereign, well, a king is a sovereign, right? Right, well, but we don't we? have kings today. Right. So, I mean, what's a We are the kings of the nation. That's exactly what it means. We are the ultimate arbitrators of our own lives, and actually it's going to, I'm going to explain that. It, some of this, these uh, things are coming up here. With uh, sovereign as the ultimate ruler, we are all, as individuals, the ultimate rulers in the United States, in America. I've got to quit using that word, in the United States. But ultimate ruler over who? Over yourself. ourselves or over our neighbors? Because over yourself. Because you, you can't be, if your neighbor is a sovereign... If your neighbor is the ultimate arbitrator of his own life, the ultimate ruler of his own life, you can't arbitrarily rule over him. And yet we're encouraged to call in and report our neighbors <laughs> if they are doing something naughty. Aren't we? Yes. And, and, and we, are, we are constantly being stirred up neighbor against neighbor. We have to, we, have to, we if we want to do something on our own property, have to get permission from our local governing authority, whether we want to build a shed. Right, that's it's exact. you're right. And I'm, what I'm trying to point out is that is not how it ought to be. Okay, all right. Well, that but, is not how it ought to be, and I'm, I'm explaining why from the original people that started our country, even, you know, they had their problems, and I could point them out real easy too, but what they were trying to set up, not all of them, but the cases that I'm using are 
what jointly the people felt at the time, and that's exactly what we should still have today. Nothing has changed. The only thing that's changed is a gang of thieves and crooks has put us in public education systems and changed our way of thinking and told us that we're the servants and they're the ruling class. John Jay was the first Supreme Court justice, chief justice of the Supreme Court. He was a writer of the Federalist Papers. He was a delegate, and he was a brilliant man. In fact, whenever they had problems with wording, they would go to John Jay and said, Mr. Jay, how shall we put this into this blah, blah, blah? And he would correctly put the words into writing. John Jay said, at the revolution, the war of independence, the sovereignty devolved on the people. That means no more kings, no more nothing. We are the sovereigns. You are your own king. They are truly the sovereigns of the country. But they are sovereigns without subjects and have none to govern but themselves. The citizens of America are equal as fellow citizens and as joint tenants of the sovereignty. And then to talk about, you know, our rulers, our presidents, our congressmen, you know, the ruling elite. John Jay had something to say about them. The differences existing between feudal sovereignties and governments found on compacts. It necessarily follows that the respective prerogatives must differ. Sovereignty is in the right to govern. A nation or state sovereign is the person or persons in whom they reside. So that would be a king or governor or whatever. In Europe, the sovereignty is generally ascribed to a prince. But here, in America, it rests with the people. There, the sovereign actually administers the government. Here, never in a single instance. Our governors are the agents of the people and at most stand in the same relation to their sovereign in which regions in Europe stand to their sovereigns. So our political class stands to us the same as a king's foot servant. Their princes have personal powers, dignities, and preeminences. Our rulers have none but official, nor do they partake in the sovereignty otherwise or in any capacity but as a private citizen. So when we hear people say that we cannot have nullification of bad laws that Congress passes, they're absolutely wrong. The people themselves are the sovereigns. If you decide that a law is not correct and unconstitutional, you are not bound by it. If the state of Alaska decides that Obamacare is unconstitutional and does not follow in pursuance thereof, the state of Alaska is not bound to or obligated to follow Obamacare. If the federal government passes a law restricting guns, it's just like when we had the, uh, you know, we passed the, what was it, the Freedom Gun Freedom Act or whatever here in the state of Alaska. We don't need more laws to make us more free. The very fact that the federal government would pass a law saying that our weapons are restricted should be nullified. It's just more correctly, instead of passing a law saying, well, we, blah, 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 the state government should just say, we did not recognize that. That is not in pursuance of the Constitution of the United States. That is outside your delegated authority. It's outside your realm. We, as a sovereign people who set up the state of Alaska, nullify that law. We will not obey it. You will not enforce it in our state or you will be arrested which the state has ultimate authority to do they have the perfect authority not power they have authority prescribed authority to do that both both Arizona and Wyoming have done just that on the yes. on the issue of gun confiscation but what happens if our state does recognize a federal law and says that we are going to enforce it. I mean, you can look right now at all of the environmental stuff that we're all of the I hoops agree. that we have yep. to jump through. That's where it comes back to the people, so the in, sovereigns of the state. That's not going to stop them from putting you in a cage. It's not. I know. So I mean, at, at some point, you, that's you're why we're here on the radio. Personal nullification to get more people to nullify. The point is to get more people to understand what their rights are and to stand up for them. And not to rely on Tammy Wilson or John Coghill or the governor or any of them. Well, if anything, we need to be calling them up and saying, hey, 
you better start listening to us. You will nullify these. You will obey your sworn oath. I don't know what a joke that is, but you will obey your oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. These laws are not in pursuance of the Constitution. Nullify them. No, we can't. We Protect can't even. Protect your citizens. I know. I know they won't even. They won't even nullify the Patriot Act. Feds come in, arrest people that are without warrants, whatever. But someday, hopefully, we can stand up. At least with the Second Amendment issue, people are finally waking up and going, "Hey, wait a minute! These guys aren't very nice after all." <laughs> but my point is, is that with these people telling our state legislators that they can't nullify anything because of the supremacy clause, it's bunk. It's absolute bunk. Shall we open up the phone lines sure. after the break? 458-TALK is the number if you'd like to participate, or you can jump in the chat room at KFAR660.com. You've got it on the Saturday morning wake-up call, hour one of Patriot's Lament, continuing here right after the Fox News on KFAR Local Talk Radio. And welcome back to uh, hour one of Patriot's Lament. We call it the Saturday morning wake-up call. And it is a program that was birthed out of the minds of the Bennett brothers, Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical and uh, Josh Bennett from Big Horn Enterprises, who is, in fact, here in the studio with us this morning. Josh, are you ready to go to the phone? Sure. People want to try to call in. 458-TALK is the number. The one that was on hold has, I guess, given up because we were, they were on hold for too long. I'll also open up the chat room so if folks want to get in there and chat, we can do that as well. Let's see what uh, t- Mr. Hamilton said, who was the dirtiest rat of all the... Ratifiers. <laughs> Ratifiers. He was the dirtiest rat of all of them. He had uh, ambitions, let's see. He wanted national government. He wanted strong federal government. He wanted a king. But even he himself, even Mr. Hamilton, said that the acts of the United States will be absolutely obligatory, obligatory as to all the proper objects and powers of the general government. But at the same time, the laws of Congress are restricted to a certain sphere. When they depart from the sphere, they are no longer supreme, nor are they binding. In Federalist Papers 33, Hamilton noted that the clause, the supremacy clause, expressly confines the supremacy to laws made in pursuit to the Constitution. So again, only laws that are specifically given to Congress in the Constitution can be constitutional, can be made, and can hold supremacy over the states and the people. Which, when you look at uh, the Constitution, most of the powers given to it were not powers that expressly gave them the authority to pass laws taking away our rights. That's why we have the Bill of Rights, ten of them which was not granted. These are not rights granted to us by a state, which is something... Or by a piece of paper. Right. If you guys listen to the radio or watch the news, read the papers and stuff, I've seen probably a dozen times in the last two weeks, two dozen times, where people are talking about the Second Amendment or the Bill of Rights, and they say, inappropriately, wrongly, they say, we were granted that by the Second Amendment. Those rights granted to us by the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights did not grant us squat. The Bill of Rights codified, put on the paper, what was already known over years and years and years. These are our rights as Englishmen, originally, and as Americans, and ultimately, as the Declaration of Independence said, people, all people. I, and man is created equal. And yet if you personally do not feel that you have the right to do something, you're not going to do it. For instance, if we, do you really believe that you have the right to free speech? Do you really believe that you can say whatever you want to say and that you're not that somebody shouldn't throw you in a cage for saying it? Well, yeah, a gang of thugs will definitely has hampered our rights. And it's on us, unfortunately, that we have allowed that to happen because we are the sovereigns. We should say whatever we feel like saying. You should be able to say whatever you feel like saying. No FCC rules. Shouldn't even be an FCC. Where is that in the Constitution of the United States and pursuant thereof? It's not. 
Oh, snap. You ready to go to the, you ready to go yeah. to the line? 458 Talk, the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? I don't want to talk. Good morning. This is Claudio. Oh, someone came. Claudio. Through. Hello. Good hey. morning. I, I, got, I want to say something here, and then I'm going to explain. I'll say, you're right, but it's still going to jail. The, sure. the, the reason I'm saying this is, is because those laws doesn't matter anymore, uh, or even Constitution, because we have, we can't, like Second Amendment, you can't have a new machine gun anymore. If you want an old machine gun, you have to pay the government to have that every year. And the Tenth Amendment doesn't exist anymore. The, the government's in charge, and uh, a lot of people still going to jail, you know, for stuff that's unconstitutional, like uh, people refuse to pay the IRS, or all this stuff. So I, I don't know what the solution is, because, like I say, you're right, but it's still going to jail. Sure. Well, the, the, the point is that uh, it doesn't mean that we give up. I mean, they would like us to. But uh, when we had a, when we had the first revolution, the War of Independence, there were several people that were going to jail. I mean, the uh, British government were hauling people off to Nova Scotia. I mean, few people know that when the British government was after the War of the French and Indian War, the Seven Years' War, the British government cracked down on the colonies because they decided that the colonies needed to start paying taxes. And they started putting all these restrictions on the colonists and all these taxes on the colonists. And they could never get a guilty verdict whenever someone broke those laws. Like you had smugglers bringing in um, molasses and things like that and sugar because the British government taxed it 100%, tried to. So the merchants that were smuggling, and um, they were getting put on trial, and the juries would never find them guilty. So that's when the British government started hauling them to a foreign jurisdiction, up to Nova Scotia. The Americans were getting hauled up to the Canadian provinces and tried under an admiralty court. And they were always found guilty then. Of course, the king's court's going to find for the king. They were no longer given jury trials. So we had the same thing 200 and some odd years ago, almost 300 years ago. We're like, well, sure, we have the rights as British. We have our common law rights, but we're, we're getting thrown in jail. We're getting this, we're getting that. But the people didn't stop. That's the difference from then and now. It's why it's why I'm on the radio, Claudio, is to get people to say, let's not give up. 250 years ago, our founders, you know, the the farmers, the the ship, the truck drivers, whatever, the guys that were the regular men, they were getting beat down. They were getting thrown in prison a lot. But they didn't give up. They kept pushing on and pushing on and pushing on, and they finally threw off their tyranny. And we've gone a long way down the road now. I think there's, I mean, we've talked about the problems and why they've happened or whatever, but it doesn't mean we stop. We have to get people educated. It's the war of the minds. It's like Adam said, the war, the, the revolution was won 10 years before the first shot was fired because you had guys like Patrick Henry and you had Samuel Adams who were standing up and giving speeches and writing proclamations, sending it to the king, and it was going like wildfire throughout the colonies that men were standing up and saying no. And when few, I mean just those two men alone, created a firestorm in, in the colonies and made people stand up and say no more. Two people. Patrick Henry alone, I don't remember exactly what, what did they call it? I'm sorry, I can't remember everything all the time. When Patrick Henry wrote his first resolution in the Virginia um, Assembly, the people went, the assembly went nuts. They said, you can't say that. You'll get thrown in jail. And he said, I am saying it. And the assembly ratified it. And Patrick Henry went home, and then the assembly unratified it. They actually nullified it before, <laughs> when Patrick Henry left. But the damage was already done because the criers took these papers and went to all the colonies with these things and said, look what Patrick Henry said. He said the king does not have the right to do this to us. He said parliament does not have the right to tax us like this. And it created a firestorm. It's where we got the Sons of Liberty. They all of a sudden popped up from that one man saying something. Now we had the Sons of Liberty in every colony 
had an organization with thousands of men that got together and would go down and depose the little dictators in their little communities. And then Sam Adams, when he stood up and said about the Stamp Act, he said, what shall, what shall we have then? Will Parliament next tax our very land? And the assembly that he spoke to actually scorned him for that. They laughed. They're like, oh, oh, oh how silly. They had never taxed. <laughs> oh, Sam, you're getting a little carried away. But from that <laughs> speech, the Bostonians stood up and put the, the British government down. The British government, the officials in, in Boston had to flee to the ships in the harbor because the people stood up from one man. And they're in the same situation we are, where people were hopeless. They're like, what do we do? They were getting arrested. They were getting hauled off to foreign jurisdictions. They were getting sent off to the uh, West Indies and sold into slavery. They were being punished all over, they, just like we are now. They stood up and spoke, and they were put down for it. But they didn't stop. And one or two guys, which turned into 10 to 15, which turned into thousands, threw off the British government. And it can happen again. Baby, it can happen again. And it's not up to us to decide what the outcome is going to be. It's up to us, it's our duty, to stand up and say what's right, no matter what the consequences to do, are. To do the right thing for ourselves and our families. Right. Regardless of what, without fear of what the consequences are going to be, because we feel that, or we believe that history will Isn't it that. for our posterity? Yeah, that's Isn't what... Isn't that it, what Christians believe in? Are we here to satisfy ourselves, or are we here to have a better life for our posterity. I mean, you raise if you're a Christian, you raise your kids to be Christians, hopefully hoping that they will raise their children to be, that will be their children to be. And it's the same thing with uh, freedom and liberty. We want to be free now. Our fight now is not for us. It's for our great-grandkids. We can't stop. I don't know what the ultimate solution or ultimate end is going to be, but that doesn't matter. God's sovereignty doesn't negate my responsibility. Thanks for the call, Claudio. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. This is the Saturday morning wake-up call. Who's on the phone? Oh, hey, who is My it? name is Bill. I'm Bill, go ahead. your B&D program. I appreciate it. <laughs> also, <laughs> you know, I'm a product of, um, you know, the 80s gun ban situation. I remember I lived in Arizona. You know, everybody got together. Everybody assembled. We marched around the Capitol. We started a group called Arizona Constitutional Rights Committee. We had 4,000 people at a speech. We had the, you know, Attorney General speaking, and everybody was excited. And, and guess what? They still banned the guns. They did everything they said they were going to do. So over the years, I, I've noticed one thing. You get 500, I don't want to say liberals, but I'll say 500 of other like-minded people together, you know, they can raise a million dollars, right? You get 500 gun owners together and gun shop owners together, and they raise a barbecue. <laughs> That's you know? Funny. Yeah, you're right. That's funny. <laughs> and, and and the bottom line is, I can't remember who said it verbatim, but, you know, if it's an unjust law, you're, it's your duty, your duty to not accept it. Yeah. And if you do... You're going to get what we always get. We're just going to get a barbecue. Except for this time, we're the ones being barbecued. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I really appreciate your, your program. And uh, I've been following um, the Bennett's for a few years now, and I'm impressed by both the brothers. I wish one would be a congressman and the other would be a senate senator. <laughs> I would vote for you guys. No thanks. <laughs> I would stand out there in 40 below old and fine if you do it. Well, I appreciate the sentiment, but... Not wanting. Josh, that. will you rule over us, please? Please come <laughs> and, rule over us. Is that what you're asking? No. You know, He's someone's got to do something. Someone that's, that's willing to fight. Someone that is tactical. Because if not, we're just going to sit here and guess what? I'm just going to buy barbecue sauce because that's what that's what's happening. That's what happened in the '80s. That's yeah. What's happening now. It's a beautiful thing to talk about it, but we got to act on it, or or we're just going to get barbecued again. Well, and, let me let me ask you, Bill. Do you believe that you have the right to keep? and bear arms? Absolutely. Okay, so what does that mean to you? Does that mean that you have the right to go out and purchase a whatever kind of firearm specifically that they give you permission to purchase? No, absolutely not. So then what is keeping you? I mean, maybe you do. Maybe Do you have an AK-47? Possibly. Okay. 
Yeah, we don't want to. I mean, we don't want to. We don't want to put you on the spot. But if you are keeping it, what's keeping you from bearing it? You know, yeah, the the consequences of being barbecued again. Yeah. So that, and there are an awful lot of people that are like that, though. I mean, they, they have a bunch of firearms at home that they keep locked up, but they don't bear them. They don't, they, they don't have anybody recognizing that, yeah, in fact, I do carry a firearm. And you know what? It is not the right to keep and bear pea shooters. I, I, wasn't the whole point of the Second Amendment so that you could defend yourself against the British Army? What were they armed with? Were they armed with tanks back then? No, they had muskets and cannon and right. ships, which is what uh, today I absolutely 100% believe we should have the right to fully automatic weapons, tanks, rocket launchers, whatever. Whatever you can afford to buy, that's what you should be able to get. And if there wasn't government regulation, you could buy a fully automatic M16 or M60 probably for about 200 bucks. You know, you know what I would like to see, and, and this is just a, kind of maybe a pie-in-the-sky thought, but I would like to see somebody go out and outfit a boat, a river boat, with the same kind of cannon, the same kind of weaponry that the Coast Guard has. Go out there and start patrolling our waters and sinking the pirate ships that are out there on the Yukon River that have been harassing the people that are just simply trying to get to the resources that the Constitution of the, of, of the State of Alaska promises the use of thereof. You think about it. When was the last time anybody stood up to the National Park Service? Did sixty some year a sixty nine year old guy got thrown in the mud? Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be correct for me to go up there and do that, or you. We live in Fairbanks, but the people that live there and use the waterways would be absolutely correct for them to do so. It'd be correct for their borough to implement that. It would be correct for the governor to put patrols, citizen patrols, not state. Mm-hmm. law enforcement. We don't need them any more than we need the federal law enforcement. But citizen patrols, I think, totally justified. You Thanks. know, as a citizen, I truly believe that everybody has their point. Some people will wait till the government's knocking on their doors to pull their guns out, to, to confiscate their guns. But I guarantee you, if I'm on any river, the state or any state, and and can you try to arrest my wife for something I don't believe is lawful? You know, and you want to throw her to the ground in front of me or, or vice versa? You know, the, the consequences, you know, the, there's the line. Somebody yeah. has to draw a line. Everybody has their line. Some people's line, you know, is better dead than, or better red than dead. That, that's not my position. But I'm going to sit back and enjoy your show. Thank you very much for the program. Thanks for, Thanks the, for call. the call, Bill. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, this is Hillbilly, man. Hillbilly, what's on your mind? Well, I just wanted to say that even though it's true you can no longer buy a fully automatic weapon for $200, if you own a Ruger 1022, you can have a fully automatic weapon for less than $200. You can have a lot of things. You can have, in the United States of America, a rocket launcher. You may not be able to buy one, but you can have one with a little education and less than a few hundred dollars. But the other thing I called in about, the thing I mainly called in about, is because people like to join groups, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm not a joiner. I'm an anarchist. I believe in no hierarchy. That's what anarchy means, is no hierarchy, meaning I don't need anybody to rule me. I'm one of those citizens that... Madison was talking about, I rule myself very well, thank you very much, I don't need to rule anybody else. But, because people like that kind of thing, even Samuel Adams had to call his group Sons of Liberty, even though there really wasn't any membership list, or qualifications to get in, or uniforms, or any of that stuff. They were just Sons of Liberty. So, mm-hmm. we can do that here. I'll declare, I'm a Son of Liberty, I'm a Son of Liberty, and the Sons of Liberty are going to hold, you know, radical... Nonviolent direct actions, uh, starting on March 4th, because March 4th is like March 4th, right? So starting on March 4th, I'll tell you straight up, if I go buy a dumpster, a, a transfer site, and I want in, and there's a lock on it, I'll cut it off. And I'll go in anyway. 
Yeah, what's the? You got to fill me in on that because I've just barely heard anything about what are they doing? Lock, the, they're closing the, the, the yeah. They're they're going to be sites? closing the transfer sites and the dump itself on uh, weekends on uh-huh. Sunday on basically on Sundays and on Mondays too, I believe. So because to quote save money, they're going to make it so that people can't go there to the transfer sites during the times when people might actually have the time to go to the transfer sites. So basically, by Default when they're trying to close dumps, you know, when they're trying to make it illegal to dumpster dive, they call it or do the transfer site thing. So mm-hmm. they're just kind of obfuscating it yeah. a different way. Right. So yeah. we have the perfect example of what we talk about all the time where the government decides what you will pay for their service and then they decide right. what service they will give you. Well, from my perspective, if the government is saying that people can't throw their stuff anywhere they want to, hence the people put it all in one place, and hence, since once it's thrown away, it's public property. I'm going to go in and get mine. I ain't worried about dumping stuff off. I'm worried about picking stuff up. Sure. So if I see a chain with a lot and I want in, I will cut it off. I'm a son of liberty, and I'm telling you now, I'm openly proclaiming, I will cut it off. Not only that, but if I see a lock on a transfer site when I just happen to have time and moseying around and I don't feel like going in, (laughs) I'll use super glue. If they lock me out, I'll lock them out. And if they put up cameras to watch the gate, I, a son of liberty, will cut a hole in the back fence. I declare war on the tyrants in this country. I will not put up with it anymore. Because I'm a son of liberty, and you can be one too. Yep. Buy a Guy Fox mask. That'll help. No, I like that I'm idea. Gonna, yeah, have yeah. one in your closet. Have one for everybody in your whole family. You imagine if closet. everybody just started walking around downtown with Guy uh-huh. Fox masks on, that would freak them out. Yeah, and a semi automobile M14 or something over their shoulder. Yeah. What's that person up to? You, know, oh. you think about all the... even in my stocking feet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he must be up to something bad, though. Obviously, if you're going to wear a Guy Fox mask, I mean, he's a, he was an anti-government person. Hmm. Yeah, and if about 30 of them filed into the borough meet and sat in the back with their grins on, <laughs> it'd shake them up. So I, anyway, I like, I like, I like the way you talk. Timothy, and I, I really want to see it happen. And you know what? This is exactly, I mean, people forget the original Boston Tea Party that was carried out by the Sons of Liberty. They yep. didn't mail tea bags to IRS agents. They went down and they dumped the entire cargo into the ocean. You know, well, I'll tell you what, let's, do, let's do, just dump something different. Those of you sourdoughs out there listening to me and saying, yeah, go for it. Those of you who got, who got the nerve, it's almost time for us to take our honey buckets in. <laughs> All right? So save some honey buckets and go down on the weekend and tip them upside down in front of the gates when they're locked. And let them have about a ton of crap to put up with the next day. We do that a few times and they'll open them up. Yeah, what's the deal with Sunday is usually a day when a lot of people, that's it, the only time they exactly, get to clean up and go down to the exactly. transfer. Exactly. If you want to know from a political standpoint, I'll tell you what they're doing. They are trying to provoke us, so let's cooperate. <laughs> they're, trying, they're trying to provoke us so that they can say no more dumpster diving at all. Right. No we more dumpster diving. Close it down completely. Well, I mean, like, they'll still reopen them for people to come in and, and dump stuff, but that's what they're really after. They're trying to provoke the dumpster divers. So all you dumpster divers out there, be provoked. That's what they want. Let them have it. Have a great day. Thank you. 458-TALK is the number. Shall we go on to another call? Yeah. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello, am I on? You are. Who is this? Oh, uh, anyway. Uh, hey, give us, to, wait, wait. Give I us your first. Subject, give us your first name. If you don't mind. Give us your first name. My first name. Yeah. Uh, Frank. Frank, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Um, I'd like to talk about Benghazi for a few minutes, and uh, what I think the only way they ever could get to the bottom of this is to subpoena the tapes from the Situation Room, like they did in the Watergate investigation. The investigation in Benghazi is still going on. I talked to our legislators and told them, subpoena the tapes. Uh, That's the only way that you can get to the truth, because if our noble leader knew, like it appears to be, four hours before the events, before the final uh, killing of, of of our gallant people and the sexual uh, ugliness that went on. They weren't doing what they did to just, just the ambassador. They were doing it to the United States, to all of us. 
And if we find out that he knew and failed to act, he violated his oath of office, he, and he is actually guilty of treason. He was aiding and abetting the enemy and then lied to the people. And we have, we have to do what we can do and keep trying. We can't let these people get away. When I saw the Hillary going off with, in glory yesterday, I mean, it just it disgusts me. And uh, we're going to have to do something. And uh, they're destroying this country. Are you still there? Oh, yeah. You are, I mean, we're we're, letting, we're they, letting you vent a little they, bit. Uh, they disgust me, too, right down from the top to the bottom. Let me, let me, when I let see me. John McCain or freaking uh, Lindsey mm -hmm. Graham getting up and talking their bull crap, they disgust me too. All of them got to go. Can, it's can not I, just uh, Obama. It's not just Hillary Clinton. What are we doing in Libya in the first th place? That's the question I wanted to ask. What are we doing in Libya in the first place? Frank, do you know what our ambassador was doing out there in Benghazi? Is that where our, is that where our embassy is? Was he even in the embassy? No, no. he wasn't. He there, was at a CIA operative He was house. at a CIA uh, safe, safe house. house when when his uh, group was attacked. What was he doing there? If, it, if it's, it, it's in a sense irrelevant whether whether it was an official embassy office or not, uh, and why should, was he there? He shouldn't have been there. But uh, I believe our president set the Middle East on fire that extended all all the way across the, the continent of Africa. It's uh, today into Turkey. It's certainly ongoing in Egypt. You think and Obama set it on fire? When he went to Cairo and. and uh, gave them a, a go-ahead, and uh, we're going to pay a price in <clears throat> this whole country wait, wait, for what's well, going on. And he, in Benghazi, he wanted to do it to, uh, it's, to back his failed foreign policy and then obstruction of justice uh, by suppressing this prior to the election. And it's so much worse than Watergate. Frank, and, uh, I, and there's an embedded fifth column of, the, of these Marxist ideologues. We're coming up on the well, on, on the break here at the top of the hour, too. You're absolutely right about everything you said about Obama, except for the fact his foreign policy is no different than the previous president that was in there. If you want to go into setting the Middle East on fire, you have to go back to 1953 when we put in the Shah of Iran. You have to go back farther than that, Josh. Well, yeah. I mean, if you want a historical perspective, the Middle East has been on fire ever since Mohammed. And why can't the people of Egypt stand up and displace Muammar or uh, Bar Barak? M Mubarak, yeah. Mubarak, yeah. Why shouldn't they be I allowed? Understand. I mean, people should be people should be displacing their tyrants. The fact is that the Mubarak was being supported by the United States because he kept the Islamists in line. And then we support the new Islamists. And the point is, get out of there. We have no business exactly. in any country except our, our own, and we are all up in each other's business as well. Frank, thanks for the call. We're up against the clock. Fox News coming your way right now. All right, welcome to the Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio, but we are streaming live around the world at KFAR660.com. And we're also on your smartphone, if your phone is smart. All you have to do is download the free TuneIn Radio app, and you can listen to us anywhere that you have service. I would recommend that if you do that, you uh, hook into the Wi-Fi wherever you are before you do, because the data charges could pile up quite quickly. <laughs> uh, just throwing that out there for your own The benefit. last thing you want is a $600 cell phone. That's bill. right. Honey, where'd that bill come from? I listened to Patriots the Men on Saturday morning. They will nullify your right to have that phone coverage. <laughs> my <laughs> wife nullifies my rights all the time. No! You may not. Okay. And you know what? A happy wife is a happy wife, so I'm good with that. All right, Josh. Uh, Josh Bennett, of course, from Bighorn Enterprises here in the studio with us. We've got a couple of lines that are on hold from the previous hour. Did you want to clear yeah, those? All right. let's see if they're... Good morning, caller. No. They no. did not hold. All right, this one just called in. Good morning. Who's this? Oh, this is Mary. Hi, Mary. What's on your mind? Well, in reference to the dumpsters, apparently our borough entity, which actually is us, owns the dumpster properties and maintains them with our money. So I say uh, I would never go so far as to dumping uh, honey buckets because that really does give the general public a serious um, possibility of infection, et cetera. Anyway, uh, I would say, why don't we just take our, the, the first time we see the locks on the uh, dumpster site, just drive over to the borough building. they got a big parking lot, lots of sidewalks. Put your trash there. <laughs> 
Let them do the cleanup right there. Well, theoretically, aren't we the government? Exactly. We're the government, so we pay taxes, so this property is essentially ours, right? Isn't it public property? And we're the public, so we should be able to throw the trash on any public property. Or at least if we have a specific place, we shouldn't be... It's our oh. property. The dumpster sites are our property, so we should be able to just cut, cl click click, click the locks off. Because if I have a lock at my house I don't like anymore, I just cut it off. If yeah. I have a lock at my transfer site I don't like anymore, I should be able to just cut it off and use it as I please. And every one of us who goes to the dumpster site can afford to go down to uh, the hardware store and buy a key to that lock, meaning a bolt cutter. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Universal key. I you like know, it that. is kind of interesting to me that we get so... I mean, I, I've kind of felt this going on here is that this thing over the transfer sites getting people worked up. Yeah. It makes me, it's kind of disgusting what we get worked up about, and yet our actual rights, our liberties are taken away from us, and we sit back and go, dang it. Oh. Or we don't even do that. We just go, darn, we got to get someone else voted in there. Uh, or we vote don't, in the exact same don't person. Don't like the law. got to get somebody in there to change the law, just. But we get worked up over a transfer yeah. site. Which we should be. We should get worked up over the transfer sites. But we should get worked up about so many other there things. There are so well. many other things to get worked up about. I mean, we got worked up about this, the gun ban thing and whatever, and we have, like we talked about I, last week, these sheriffs that are saying, we're not going to put up with that. We're not going to take your guns, I, blah, blah, blah. I really think that's a bait and switch. I really you do. you violate us every stinking day, uh -huh. Mr. Sheriff. I really think that the gun issue is a bait and switch. I think that what they're going to end up passing is legislation for mental health oh, that, that gives the government the power and, and the ostensible legal authority, mm -hmm. even though I don't think they would really do have authority, they're going to give themselves the legal authority to go and involuntarily commit people that the, that the government terms to be non compass mentis. Yeah, now, that is really dangerous. I even saw Sylvester Stallone, mm. Sylvester, uh, Sylvester Stallone an article the other day where he said that he's all for these gun control measures. He said, we got to get gun control measures. And then he goes, in the same sentence, he goes, even though I don't really think the problem is guns, because it seems like every time one of these things happen, the people are mentally deranged, seriously mentally ill. People, you do not want the government to step in and start deciding what to do with mentally ill people. The Soviets did that. This is a precursor. I guarantee mm -hmm. you do not want these mental health bills to start going through where they decide who's mentally fit, who's not, what they should do with them. You don't want that. You well, do not want that. Well, you think about all of the different things that have been considered mental illness over the centuries. I mean, what did Hitler do with the homo mental Homosexuality illness? has been considered a mental illness for all of my gay friends that uh, think that they want to have mental illness covered by the government thinking that the state wasn't necessarily correct in some matters that was considered a mental exactly. illness exactly it was considered a mental expression. illness if you criticized the state obviously you have to be crazy to speak out against such a beneficent ruler as we have hitler deposed of mentally ill people he actually went out and killed them right yeah but the soviets i mean they were more soviet civilized about it they went and they put you into work camps and if you still if you refused to work then they medicated you I wonder how they were more civilized when they... Was it because they killed those 20 million civilians of their own? Is that what made them more civil? Because well, they got rid of the it uncivil was, people? Was, no, it was equal opportunity murder. They didn't just get rid of the infirm or the racially impure, as the as Hitler put it. They got rid of anybody who, who, <laughs> yeah. who, who, who dared to. They were to. equal exactly. opportunity killers right there. Yeah. You know the states killed almost... At the very minimum, I've seen a, like a hard conservative number, 167 million people in the 20th century, from two, 1900 to 2000. The, the, most, the highest number I've seen is over 220 million people. That's how many people state governments killed in the last century. The crazy thing is, I think only... Is it even, I don't even think it's 50. It's somewhere between 20 and 30 million were actually, not even that, combatants, like soldiers. 90% of those people, we're talking 200 million people, like that would be almost everyone in the United the entire, States, the in the entire, entire country. country. States killed the last 100 years, and almost all of them, over 90%, were civilians. 
their own people. Well, you wouldn't. I mean, doesn't a rancher have the right to go out and slaughter his cows? <laughs> yeah. And we're actually in that number because we've killed our own mm-hmm. civilians, several of them. But anyways. 458 okay. Talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Yes, Winston. Hey, Winston. Hello, Winston. Hey. Uh, two things. Uh, 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 in 1789, uh, 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 the spirit of 89. Yeah, uh, there was uh, a Excellent bunch of ship owners and insurance companies. Uh, 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 went to the American, uh, 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 you know, to the under the Articles of Confederation, the federal government. They told them, said, we got to have a taxpayer uh, a naval fleet to patrol the, the, the western Mediterranean because them people in Libya are seizing our, our merchant ships and holding the people hostage. Uh, and uh, uh, oh, that's the reason we've got this uh, a lame constitution that we've got. Uh, You're uh, speaking of the Barbary pirates. The Barbary pirates said they were they were coming out of Libya. Uh, what's now Libya? Uh, 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 and it was the Bay of Libya that was uh, 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 doing it. You know, yeah, uh, the Bay of Tripoli. Uh, the shore of Tripoli. Yeah, and uh, uh, so I mean. Uh, uh, this government that we've got is nothing in the world, but it's set up to protect businesses. Uh, uh, I mean, it's it's something else. One other thing uh, is Patrick Henry. Uh, Patrick Henry is, is 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 probably my favorite. Mine too. Of the founding fathers. Uh, people kept constantly asking him to go to the federal government uh, uh, to to be part of the federal government. He refused. Yep. He stayed in. The, he stayed in. The, he 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 served in no office that was outside the state of Virginia. Yeah, actually, Washington actually asked him to be part of his cabinet when Washington first became president, and Patrick Henry refused. He'd had right. nothing to do with it. No. He uh uh, uh, uh like I say, uh, I'll get off air and uh, I'll get off the phone and, and and let y'all go to something else, but uh. uh yeah, I, I, I think you're doing a great job, and, and, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Winston. You, you, no, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was going <laughs> to... Yeah, you look at the, the issues, once again, here, of why did we get involved with the Barbary Pirates? You know, the, the people's patriotic fervor, their blood boiled to think that Americans were being captured and held hostage by these, well, barbarian Muslim extremists. And we, I say we, I'm not a, none of us were alive. The, the United States raised this n- naval force to go over there and put our, our boot up their ass. Mm-hmm. And you, you think about it, that, isn't that the American way? At any time, so and, says. You know, well, yeah, but I mean, what, what business do Americans have doing business in other countries in the first place? Who's jo- if you decide to go outside of your home, if you decide to go outside of your country and go someplace else to go and do business. Yeah, it's at your own risk. What, what responsibility do I have to protect you? None. None, and actually the Barbary Wars was a precursor to the Spanish-American War. Same issue. Same exact thing. When the, I don't remember what his name was, but he was an admiral and then he was part of the war college. He said that, you know, we need to have a strong navy to promote, uh, see, here's how it was. The it's so funny because we actually fell into a Marxist theory. The United States did. Marxist theory was that capitalism was bad because you'd start producing too many goods, and then you'd have so many goods that that people would could only you know take in so much. Well, now you have an overabundance of goods, so people start laying people off. The companies go, well, we don't need this many supplies because we have too many. People aren't buying them, so they lay people off. So then more people get laid off, more people get laid off. So that was one of the Marxist theories was that capitalism's bad because you have overproduction, which destroys the economy, which puts the little guy out of business or out of work. So we adopted that. McKinley, President McKinley actually adopted that mentality because he said, wow, we were booming. The United States was booming. He said, well, we need more markets. Otherwise, we're going to have this, what the Marxists believed would happen, overproduction. And so he agreed with this, man, 
like I said, I, sorry I don't remember everyone's name, but this uh, ex-admiral of a war college, and he was a, a teacher at the war, professor at a war college, who said that we need to have big navies, because if we have big navies, we can have more overseas trade, and we can have shipping lanes, and we can protect them. And their object was, his object was, in McKinley's, was we need Asian markets. That'll take care of overproduction because we can start sending our stuff to China because they're so rich over there. Did, didn't any of those people read the, the, about the rise of the British Empire? No. I mean, isn't that exactly what the British did? Do any of our supposed representatives read anything now when they think that we can't have nullification because of the supremacy clause? Uh, realistically, I mean, that's exactly what the Romans did, too. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, the, the whole idea of empire, of, of going out and expanding, of taking new territory... Yeah, so that's what we did. We we had a false flag with the Spanish, and we started a war with the Spanish. We took out Cuba. We basically freed Cuba, quote unquote. And then one of the things that McKinley said was, "We are not colonizing. That is not our purpose. Our purpose is just to have free trade." So then we went to the Philippines because that's where we wanted to go was to uh, Asia. And like like I said, what, what the reason I'm bringing this up was from. Uh, Winston, when he called him, was talking about the Barbary Wars. Right, this, exactly. That was an opening. That was the precursor. We had a precedent to go overseas with military force to open shipping lanes for our merchants. So we go into the Philippines, kick out the Spanish, and then we decided we were going to stay. Then we made a colony. Then the Filipinos uh, rose up against us and said, Whoa, you guys were just going to free us. That's what you said. And we're like, Yeah, we changed our mind. You Catholics need to be Christianized. So we killed over 100,000 Filipinos in, the, in their resistance. We, I shouldn't say that word, the, the federal States. government, McKinley, who wanted specifically, he said he wanted to Christianize the Philippines. They were a Catholic country, but he wanted to make them Protestants. We killed over 100,000 Filipinos when they rose up to throw us off after we promised not to do what we actually did. But then we ended up having our big navy, and we had our shipping lanes, and blah, blah, blah. Long story short was Jefferson, when he went to the Barbary, fought the Barbary pirates, was a precursor to what ended up being what started with McKinley, our imperialist government. And again, you ask the, ask the question, what business do you have of protecting me None. if I decide that I want to go out and engage in risky behavior someplace else, you know, even even in my own city. If I decided I want to go out and walk at 3 in the morning, do you have a responsibility to keep me safe? No. If I see someone mugging you, I might come over and help you out. But even then, how are you going to know that they're mugging me if I'm, <laughs> if I'm out walking at a time that most people are sleeping? That's true. And isn't that what the whole police force thing is about? You hire people to basically go out and patrol and and watch for bad guys to keep everybody else safe. Mm -hmm. hmm. You should absolutely be free to go overseas to free trade. That's your own risk. You should not. You're going right? at your own risk. Make a little money and get your own little private army going along with you. Yeah. If they, Put some guns on that shit. There you go. But the government prevents you from doing that. Let's get rid of the government. Okay, right. well, let's go back. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Uh, is this me? It might be. It depends on who it is. Uh, this is Gerald. Gerald, it's not you. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. It is. What's on your mind? Uh, I'd like to say something about the Second Amendment, if I may. Go ahead. Okay, well, I'm on the left politically, and I grew up as a little boy hunting and everything. I shot expert with an M16A1 when I was in the United States Marine Corps in the latter 70s. And up here in Alaska, I was intimate with a long gun for many years out in the bush. <laughs> And I perceive that the Second Amendment banner is planted deep in uh, Republican territory. Uh, I see that the Second Amendment issue isn't just about the uh, Second Amendment. It's a proxy battleground for all this other left and right stuff that's going on all the time. Uh, I just want to say that the way the game is rigged right now, uh, if you support the Second Amendment banner, you're, you're supporting a lot of other stuff that you might want to mess with, which I don't, uh, but if the Second Amendment matter were to be a standalone issue, plan it in the middle of the political chessboard where everyone who wanted to associate with it could do so without touching any of this other political bag baggage, 
I think the numbers would change immediately because I think there's millions of people like me on the left who uh, grew up hunting and get it about self-defense, but it's just it's just the Republicans are using the Second Amendment to hit the Democrats, and the Democrats see the Second Amendment thing uh, as a way to bring down the Republicans. Uh, Absolutely. So that, That's a good point. That's a, it's the same thing they use. with uh, po- Politics do that with everything, with abortion, with the guns, with... Agreed, I mean, veterinarian. You just, Agreed. Yeah, you can just go on and on and on. I mean, how many Republicans, when it gets down to it, you have these Republicans that say that they're for the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms, blah, blah, blah. They're the same jokers that vote for the National Defense Authorization Act and put in amendments to that that can throw you into prison without having a jury trial or even be charged with anything. Well, The reality, same people. Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree with you, uh, but I just wish it, you look at Mothers Against Drunk Driving. They, they didn't align. They just had their one thing. They didn't make anything else with it. They planted it in the middle of the political chessboard, and uh, it was very successful. And I think that, you know, if I have to choose a phony baloney, if I'm forced to choose a phony baloney, I prefer left-wing phony balonies to right-wing phony balonies. Thank you very much. But I wish, with regards to the Second Amendment issue and with a lot of other stuff that's going on, someone would try and build a tent on uh, in the middle of the political chessboard or 65% of us could be comfortable and we could work together to bring down both elites. But if I'm that, forced to make the choice, I'm choosing left. Well, you're, I see what you're saying with uh, you're going to choose the left, but isn't what you're saying is correct in the, of the other side of it. Isn't it in our best interest to do away with the political parties, Get period. off the chessboard entirely. Get off the chessboard and oh, play our own game. I, I, agree. Gonna, I mean, it's all these political parties do, the left, the right, Republicans, Democrats, all they do is pit you against me, against our other neighbor, against our other neighbor, where we fight ourselves, when most of the time we agree on the fundamentals. I mean, we all agree that we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, but they nitpick us, we're... We're beating each other down while they're living high on the hog, fat off our taxes, getting away with whatever they want to get away with. We, the citizens, beat each other up by their instigation because of their political parties, and they're laughing it all the way to the bank. Well, I, I agree with you, and uh, when I'm not picking on Republicans, I'm, I, I ravage liberals. I pick on liberals, and I pick on Democrats. <laughs> right on. I, I, I do. Uh, and I, I went down to Far North Tactical, and I left you that thing down there. I got it, and I'm sorry about the book. There was uh, yeah, there was two copies there before, and they were both gone. Yeah. But I apologize for that because uh, okay. the guy called me. I was in Prudhoe Bay, and he said, "Hey, someone's here for the book." And I'm like, "Well, there's two copies there," and he said, "No, uh-huh. they're gone." But okay. uh, I'll hook up with you sometime and get you that one, though. I haven't forgot. Oh. Okay. Well, you got my number, and you can just leave yep. a message. I just check for messages once a day. All right, man. Well, thank you. But, Appreciate but, it. But if if a uh, 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 a tent could be built in the middle of a chessboard, I think it would be different for for the Second Amendment. A lot of things. That's basically what I wanted to say. Thank the, you. Well, yeah. thanks for the point again, though. I mean, if we are continuing to decide to play the game, what 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 that caller was advocating was what we need is a new team, and you hear that coming from both the right and the left on different issues. Well, if we just had a new political party then we can keep playing the same game and things will be different. We need an anti-party party. We just need a citizen. We just need to be people. That's we, all we need we to be. Rewrite that. Or I say that you have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of property or happiness. I do too. End of story. Stop trying to interfere with my ability to take care of my family. Stop trying to interfere with me, period. What is it your business? And what is it the business of people that we elect or you guys elect that you send to Congress or the State House or whatever. You send people that have no idea about anything. Most of them never ran a business. But they make laws telling me how to run my business, my actual money-making business. You send people there that some of them have never had children, but they write and vote on laws dictating how people should raise their kids and how they should be educated. Mm-hmm. What the heck is going on, people? Uh, why? Why, why are you, you doing that? Why do you keep sending? Why do you keep asking me to vote for someone to be in charge of me? You, you look at—I mean, even the, the the whole snap thing going on with the Republican Party and Russ Millette. <laughs> uh, I mean, oh, all of those wow. people who got tricked by the Republican Party 
I, it doesn't matter if you're Ron Paul supporter. Come and be a part of our party. You can make a difference. Yeah. You can you can help change things. You do. You don't like the way things are in the political process. Come change. Come come join the Republican Party and be an agent of change. Ha ha. Jokes on you. <laughs> ah, so funny. You know what? I really see, and I surely hope that's the demise and end of the state Republican Party. And I myself was a delegate for Ron Paul. And I promote, or I advocate, or I promise, I'll say that word, I promise to do everything in my measly little power to make sure any Republican that runs for office again in this state that's, well, locally, because you know, who cares what's going on in Juneau, I'll denounce them. I'll speak out against them. I'll do whatever I can to make sure a Republican doesn't get elected. No matter what they offer? No matter what it is. All right. Anything I can do to spite the Republican Party. So basically party. because the Republicans peed in your coffee? You're we are, <laughs> as Bugs Bunny would say, of course you knew this means war. All right. You've got it on KFAR. It's local talk radio, but we're online at KFAR660.com. You can also check us out on our Facebook page. Heck, you don't even have to like us to like us there. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be back after the Fox News with more Patriots Lament. We have two lines on hold and two lines open. 458-TALK if you'd like to call in and be a part of the program the old-fashioned analog way. 458-TALK or online, KFAR660.com. Welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio online at KFAR660.com. I'm Steve Floyd, the man with a face made for radio, and I'm here more to uh, push buttons and make sure that the (laughs) <laughs> the message gets the out. The cough gets out. That's right. Uh, joining us from Big Horn Enterprises, we've got uh, Josh Bennett in the studio today, and we have three lines currently on hold. Cool. You know, just real quick, when I we started the show off talking about nullification and and uh, the proper way to look at yourself as a, a, not a citizen, but as a sovereign, and the proper way to look at government according to the Founding Fathers, I, I look at it a little different even than they do. I don't find them to be legitimate at all. Nothing they say. Nothing they pass. They're not legitimate. And I hope more and more people come to that conclusion when we see political parties like the Russ Millet thing. They're corrupt. They're a gang of thieves. Don't waste your time trying to change them. Use your time more effectively to change yourself and talk to your neighbor. The war is in the minds. The war can be won internally with ourselves. We don't need them. We don't need more laws to make us more free. It uh, doesn't work. We can see what's going on in the last 200 years. Let's look at history and see what's been happening. And let's quit being... What's the word? Uh, where you do the same thing over and over again? Expecting, expecting a change? Expecting that a different is the outcome? Classic definition of insanity. Insanity, thank That's you. Right. Gosh. You, sir, are non compass mentis, and I think that you ought to be involuntarily committed. Let's tell ourselves that we will not do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, expecting a different outcome, because the outcome is not going to change. It's time to look for a new liberty. Go to for the real phone. liberty. You yeah. want to go to the phone? So, just real quick. Okay. okay. <laughs> I hope I didn't bore people too bad about it, but there is history behind the stuff I was trying to explain. I can talk to people individually better, maybe, or... But when you have our representatives, your representatives, come on the different talk shows and they try to and you try to explain nullification to them or try to encourage them to fight the federal government, to fight back, we need to encourage them to fight. They need to stand up. But a lot of them don't have maybe, I'm not going to say that they're dumb or anything, but they don't have all the information that they need to have. So educate yourself. That's what I'm trying to do is give you a little bit of education. I'm not trying to, I'm not putting myself on this banner saying I'm so much smarter than you. That's why I came in here. But I do know a few things. I'm trying to share those things with people. If you don't know it, you can explain that to your representatives. When Tammy Wilson comes on the radio, call her, encourage her to fight, and give her the firepower that she needs to fight the federal government. What and John Coghill, all of them. If we're educated, we can educate our, your, <laughs> yeah. 
your legislators to fight back. That's one of the things we I really appreciate about you, Josh, is that you keep sending people back to the education issue, not not the state education issue, but the self-education issue is, do you know the history? Do you know what the founders said? Can you find in the Constitution where you have the authority to do such and such? Do you find in history where we see this how already having played out? And everything that you say has checked out. Because sometimes I, I shake my head and I think to myself, that when you're done on a particular Saturday, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way that could have happened. And then I go and I Google it. And I get online and I find that, oh my goodness, he's right. That really did happen. Or I, I find uh, through some of these websites that you have recommended in the past, like the Mises Institute, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, there are people who have fought through these issues hundreds of years ago? Yeah, isn't that amazing? Hundreds. And I can sit here and read their Bola words tea. yeah, and, and find something that is, uh, and, and see how they dealt with it. And it's still pertinent to today? Yeah. That's what I think is fantastic. Nothing's new under the sun, as Solomon told us. Yeah. And boy, was he right. <laughs> yeah, let's do 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. You still there? Who's this? Yeah, my name is Dave. Dave, go Dave, go Yeah. I just wanted to let you know a little something that's going on right here in our own backyard. I was, uh, December 13th, we had that new snowfall, about 12, 14 inches, I guess. I uh, was heading up to pull up one of my neighbors up his driveway, and, and uh, supposedly I got pulled over by a state trooper. And he said I didn't stop at a stop sign all the way, but uh, he chose to follow me up the road as far as my buddy's driveway and got out screaming and pointed a gun to my head. <laughs> and uh, I've been incarcerated over here at the halfway house for about 50 days now, and I can't get a bail, <laughs> bail hearing. I got a public pretender. I can't get rid of her. I'm just getting... Uh, pretty much ignored by the whole system here. But I, I guess it's a it's a crime it's a crime to be poor. Wait a minute, you're you're in a facility right now. Yes sir, North aren't Star they, Center. Aren't they supposed to give you a hearing like within I don't know what Alaska law is, but it's like within twelve hours or something? I got a hearing and they they uh gave me a high bail and I never got a chance they they never gave me a chance to say anything, pretty much. Well, you and, got pulled over for not stopping or pulling this guy up the hill or what? Yeah, at the end of Rolling Road, there's a stop sign. There, there's a big dip, at, and you go up the hill, and there's a stop sign there. Well, at 2 in the morning, they were having that witch hunt uh, through the holiday season there, and me and my wife were going up there to help my neighbor up his driveway, and uh, supposedly he said I didn't stop 100% at his stop sign. So he were you, chose to, Were you pulling someone at the time? No, sir. Oh. I was going to my neighbor's house to help him get up his driveway. And, uh, yeah, I got got up to his driveway. Well, the trooper gets out of his car screaming and hollering and got a gun to my head and yanks me out of my truck. And I've been here ever since. What's your name? David Quillen, Q-U-I-L-L-I-N. And, uh... This court system in the state of Alaska, from everybody I've been able to talk to, they're pretty much warehousing people. And, uh. Well, yeah, it's bank money, man. And this place where I'm at right now, they're, they're making bank. They're not, they're not feeding anybody anything. Hardly, just enough to keep you alive. The place is a shamble. Nobody should even have to eat out of the kitchen up here. I have my wife called Guttenberg, and, and uh, yeah, I'm still here. Have her send us an email. Uh, yeah. No, so serious. I just want to let people, your audience, audience know that you're only going to get as much justice as you can afford in this town. Yeah, you got that right. This town, this, oh, my gosh. Why, I mean... And I'm a family man, and, and I'm trying to support my family here in the wintertime. So let's just let's just presume that everything this guy's telling us is true, right? Right. So we're going to presume everything you're saying. You just speed limit. And I don't doubt it, David, because I've been in the same situation. They freak out. 
So why should you spend time anywhere being held by anyone because you didn't stop at a stupid stop sign? Yes, sir. I mean, that is so stupid. So yeah, let's see. Let's I've been refused bail, too. I've been trying to get a bail hearing since let's, the 14th uh, of uh, January, and I'm just getting the kick around. I'm not getting anywhere. I've, 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 email, I've uh, faxed some papers to the judge. I've faxed papers to the public defender's office, and I'm still sitting here. Uh, you know, I... I got a I got a hearing the other day. It was a uh, it was a uh, calendar call. Well, in my court, my order from the court says I should have a a trial the following week after my calendar call. What well, the heck are you in jail for 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 uh, stop sign? Yes, How sir. Do they they do tried. That? They tried to make it a DUI, but but it ain't. It's not a DUI. You know, I have the right to remain silent, but evidently I didn't have the right to not blow for him. You know, and I was painting in the house, and I was using a enamel paint, which is a lacquer-based paint, but uh, I, I, I didn't feel like I had to blow before I could talk to an attorney or some kind of counsel, you know. So they hit me with that, but they've already offered me a deal. Where they're offering me a, a felony DUI. <laughs> Well, I haven't had one in 13 years, and they're trying to trying to make a felony DUI, and they they dropped the refusal on me, and uh, and I had a situation last year where I was falsely accused of an assault and a weapons misconduct by a methamphetamine addict down the street from me, and I uh, had probation. I had to take a deal because they were looking at two to five on me, and. And I had to take a deal. They, they lowered the charges to misdemeanors, and I took the plea deal. And uh, so now they're going after me for a PTRP, which is a petition to revoke my probation on me. Right. And uh, they actually let you listen to this show in the... Oh, you're in a halfway house. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm okay. listening to it right now in my in my room over here. Hmm. But, uh, uh, not not for long. And now <laughs> that they know you're on the radio, they're going to be knocking on your door in just a few minutes, David. Yeah, they'll probably be knocking on my door and take me over and put me in the Bob Wire Hotel over there they got in town. But uh, i just like people to know that if you think you're going to get any kind of justice in the court system in this town, you're just you're kidding yourself because those people are on salaries and they... They don't care about any justice or any truth. Uh, they're just leading people through to like a slaughter. You don't have God in the court anymore. They don't put your hand on the Bible and swear to tell the truth, and the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. There's no justice here. And no, the court officers actually have the right to lie and not be held liable for it. Yes, sir, and so do the police. Yep. They're not, and I, I believe... If a policeman is out there to uphold justice, if he's caught in a perjury in the court, he should be, I mean, the, the person that they're lying, I mean, he should be held accountable, but they're not. And I believe... Yeah, there's a new set of rules for the ruled and the rulers. There's a complete different set of rules for us versus them. And they're the ones that make it us versus them. We're not doing it. I don't go out of my way to try to make it us versus them. I'm just trying to make a living and raise my family and feed my family, and they want to make it us versus them. Yes, sir. Hey, David, make sure that you uh, you have our email address here at the show. Make sure you have your wife email. Could, could I write that down real quick? Please do. Patriots Lament. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Let me get something to write on here. I have it, how you say that? Patriots Lament. That's P-A-T-R-I-O-T-S Lament. L A M E N T at Gmail dot com. Let me get this right here. At Gmail. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. All right, Patriots. Patriots Lament at Gmail dot com. Have your wife email the show, and uh, we'll see if we can get you in touch with somebody else who might be able to uh, further uh, your cause. Of liberty, you know. I thank you for the call, by the way, Josh. I, I'm uh, some of the things that this caller said. 
just I, ticks it, me off. Well, no, it, it rings true in, in, in a number of different ways, especially when he was talking about how he basically had to take a plea deal because they're threatening him with basically never seeing the light of day. Mm-hmm. You like being in? You like being in jail, buddy? How about we keep you in jail and, and tack on all these extra years, or you could take this plea deal and you'll be out with your family. That's what they did to Mike Anderson exactly. over and over and over in a single cell where, you know, they had him confined. And they just, just sign this paper. Just sign this paper. Just sign this paper. Just sign this paper. Trying to force him to. You know, they had him naked in a cell by himself for a month. Just sign this paper. I mean, come on. That's like Nazi Gestapo, Leninist, Stalinist, whatever. No, that's America, baby. That's America. That's the United States government. Just sign this piece of paper and we'll let you go. And they would tell him, you know, you're never going to see your wife and kids again. Your wife's starving. Your wife's out in the cold. She doesn't have anywhere to go because we destroyed your freaking house. That's reality here. Why I don't like them. Hey, boys, I don't like you because I don't like what you do. Because you're wrong. Well, we got to go vote for someone else. I'm kind of mad now. Let's take another call. Four five eight. Somebody's talk. got something good to say. <laughs> Four five eight. Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Yeah. Good morning, Frank Turney. Hey, good morning, Frank. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Hey, David. If you're listening out at the halfway house, my number is 457-2333. 457-2333. I'll see what I can do to shake up the court system. It might be a hell of a job, but uh, but this is Frank Turney. Why well, call? I like to share something from a. Uh, a Liberty calendar I received. Lying is deadly and highly contagious. When you have liars trained in dynamic arts controlling the highest seats of governmental authority, you have liars controlling information channels, you have liars administrating workplaces, marketplaces, schools, churches, and homes without realizing realizing it, your nation practices in politics of witchcraft. You know, we have liars sitting in judgment in black robes. We have liars in our state legislature. We have liars in our city, borough, and state, and federal government. You know, I could just go on and on. And I just want to say, uh, it's real refreshing, Josh, to hear you speak the truth about our founding fathers, state nullification, jury nullification, NDAA. You know, there was a quote somewhere, I don't know who quoted it, but they say speaking the truth is a revolutionary act today. Yeah. Well, we need more revolutionaries. Thank you for the show. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for the call. Four, he five, actually, eight, talk the he, number. No. I want to. I I'll, I'll read this really quick. This is something that I found today at uh, LouRockwell.com. I know you all are going on that daily, right? Okay. This is to be governed. A little speak. A little writing. To be governed is to be watched, inspected. I want. I want you to think about you yourself and this country and your government. To be governed is to be watched, inspected, spied upon, directed, law-driven, numbered, regulated, enrolled, indoctrinated, preached at, controlled, checked, estimated, valued, censured, commanded by creatures who have neither the right, nor the wisdom, nor the virtue to do so. To be governed is to be at every operation, at every transaction noted, registered, counted, taxed, stamped, measured, numbered, assessed, licensed, authorized, admonished, prevented, forbidden, reformed, corrected, and punished. It is under the pretext of public utility and in the name of the general interest to be placed under contribution, drilled, fleeced, exploited, monopolized, exerted from, extorted from, squeezed, hoaxed, robbed, then at the slightest resistance From the first word of complaint, to be repressed, fined, vilified, harassed, hunted down, abused, clubbed, disarmed, bound, choked, imprisoned, judged, condemned, shot, deported, sacrificed, sold, betrayed, and to crown it all, mocked, ridiculed, derided, outraged, and dishonored. That is government. Government. That is its justice. That is its morality. From Pierre Joseph Proudhon. When did he write that? I don't remember. I don't know. I don't have the exact year here, but it had to have been back in... What's his name again? Joseph Pierre? Pierre Joseph Proudhon. P-R-O-U-D-H-O-N. Okay, I'm going to look that up. That's a great quote. All right, you ready to go back to the phones? And that named us. 
Yeah. Every single oh, thing. Well, you every think about single it, thing. Just the very fact that you cannot go outside your door. <laughs> you cannot go outside your door without being in violation of some kind of code. Think about it. I am. I'm four, mad. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hi, this is Cricket. Cricket, what's on your mind? Well, um, I was wanting to let everybody know out there that Bonnie Williams has a meeting every Friday at the Denny's restaurant, and they're discussing guns. And um, also, I really believe that people need to start grouping together because uh, where there's a lot of people, there's power. And remember the, the uh, Randy Weaver, uh, what happened to him? It was all over guns. And uh, his, you know, part of his family was murdered. And also these people that uh, killed the wife and the dog and the boy should be brought up on uh, gun charges and murder. I mean, that should not be let go. And also Obama, I think people should impeach him and anybody that violates anybody's rights. And I just wish people would get together because you don't want to sit there and be a Randy Weaver. I mean, yeah, Lon you know, Horiuchi. People don't like to be together, but you know you're going to have to do something. Lon Horiuchi was the FBI agent that shot him, and shot uh, Vicky Weaver right in the face. And did he end up going to jail for murder? No, because uh, the state said that you know he acted, he was you know he, he was yeah. reasonable in shooting a woman who was holding a baby. Yep. Uh huh. Yep. Eight months old baby. Yep. Thanks for the call. Yeah, thank four, you. 458 five, dog is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Yeah, how sick they were. Hey, you know hey, when, Roger. You hang know on, when they hang on, You know when they killed Vicky? They first they shot Sammy in the back. He's 14 years old. They shot him in the back. 14 year old kid. David, how old are you? 14. Bang. Shot him in the back. That's <laughs> pretty brave right off the bat, you know. You got full automatic weapons. He had a 22. And he shot in the air, turned around and took off running. They shot him in the back. So then they shot uh, Vicky Weaver when she opened the door for Randy. He was down taking care of his son's body. And then when he was walking back to the cabin, they shot him. So he's screaming, trying to get back in the house. When Vicky opens the door, she's holding her couple-month-old baby. They shot her in the face. And that bullet actually ricocheted and hit Kevin, who was their friend that was in there too. So she laid there in a pool of blood in their cabin for days, rotting away, right? And they have other kids in there, little girls. And they're sitting there looking at their mom, blown to pieces. You know what the FBI would do in the morning time? They knew that she was dead. They would call out on their loudspeakers and say, Hey, Vicky, we had blueberry pancakes this morning. What did you have for breakfast? Hang on a second, Roger. Roger's trying to talk to you. Oh, sorry, Roger. Go ahead. No problem. Hey, um, I, my original thing I called for was I, I just want to give sort of a message to all the people who love the Constitution. Um, you, you can't be a libertarian or a person who adheres to the principles of liberty is a libertarian, by the way, because I'm getting a whole lot of arguments about this lately, people talking about um, liberty, you know, don't be a libertarian because libertarians, they just, you know, they're pro-choice and all this stuff, and uh, that's that's absolutely false. Um, a libertarian has to acknowledge the right and the liberty of someone who has the potential for a human life. That is what everyone protects. That's what everyone's right to life is, is the potential for every day of your life. Now, uh, uh, zygote in your belly that's a bit that's a, it has the potential for a human life that's what you're protecting that's what everyone protects is the potential and so that being said um all the people who claim to be uh you know constitutional you know you love the constitution you adhere to the constitution I say don't adhere to the constitution because the constitution in the 16th amendment says Everything that I own belongs to the government. <laughs> exactly. I'm a slave, as far as the Constitution says. Everything I own, the 16th Amendment says, that you can, can be taxed for any reason that they say 
including your labor, which makes you a slave. So if you're a constitutional lover, a constitutional lover, then you can't be a libertarian. You can't have it both ways. I don't think the 16th Amendment was actually properly ratified, but that's for another show. But the other thing, you're absolutely right. If you guys love the Constitution, read a little Lysander Spooner mm. and get some education oh, yeah. going on. But on the other hand, Roger, I do think that it's, as, as libertarians, anarchists, whatever you want to call it, we have, it's not a bad thing to use it against them. Use yeah. the Constitution against the... the uh, Make them, make your these elected officials say, hey, follow your constitution. You took an oath. Follow it. Yeah. When, when you enter into a contract, you are bound by that contract. You took yeah. an oath. Follow right. it. You took an oath. Follow it. Yeah. Whether I believe in it or not, you took that oath. That's what you have taken an oath to follow. Just, yep. I mean, I don't have to believe in it. You you believe in it, or you wouldn't have taken the oath. Right, which so, includes the Bill of Rights that were attached to it, which, which were the first ten amendments, which I love thinking about that. We had to amend the Constitution before it even started. Before it was even ratified. Before it was ratified, <laughs> because there were no rights for the people. <laughs> yeah. Ah, there's something wrong there. I, I, I want to make an amendment to the Constitution. It says, you have the right to breathe. That's, that'd, that'd be a good one. That'd, that'd go start. right along with the rest of them. You have the right to breathe. Or the people. We'll, we'll see them pick apart the word the people. <laughs> you know? Yeah, what's well, the people? You and, and therefore, you would have the right to breathe. You're if a person, the Constitution not only people. said it. Well, but even then, you're already, did, you, by, by doing that, though, you are taking away the rights of those who are not breathing. I mean, look at the, <laughs> look at the unborn. They already don't have any rights. Yeah. That was my point I was, yeah. I was getting to. Um, the, that's, that's one of their big arguments, you know. Oh, this isn't a person because it's never taken a breath. Well, um, <laughs> if you want to start making little, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you say that, then you have agreed to the terms that a person does not have the right to life. Then we just now we just have to negotiate. We already are at that point culturally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you think about all the people who are, are being uh, taken off life support because uh, they don't have a right to life. Or think about somebody like Terry Schiavo who was starved to death. She was breathing yeah. on her own. They starved her to death because her husband didn't want her alive anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That exact thing happened to my grandpa, James Mays. Um, he was he had brain cancer, he fell into a coma, and his new wife starved him to death. Uh, and she didn't go to jail. Yeah. That yeah. was murder. We have to decide whether all life is precious, because if all life is not, then none is. If none's protected, if all life isn't protected, none is. Yep. If you don't, if you don't believe that all life should be protection, protected, I don't believe that your life should be protected. Uh, and that's basically where we're headed right yeah. now. Josh, right, Roger, quickly, con contact information. PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. PatriotsLament at gmail.com is the email. And uh, Radio Free Fairbanks on the YouTube. And thanks for listening. Hope somebody got something out of the show. By the way, we've already got Hour 1 is already posted at kfar oh, sweet. And not sure if we're going to get Hour 2 get up before there Monday. Get educate but some people, especially your elected officials. And Google Weissander Spooner. Find yeah. out who he was and what he said. I think you'll be refreshed.